Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you three fun activities to play with your stuffed animals. This is part four of a series a lot of people seem to love, so I'll have the playlist for that linked down below. But I know a lot of people have been requesting this and it's been taking me so long because I wanted to save it for summer when I had more time since these do take quite a while. But even though I'm still in school, I decided to finally give the people what they want and make it. Now let's get started. Okay, so the first idea is giving your stuffed animals a full movie theater experience. So I'm only gonna craft a few things for this, but the first thing I'm gonna make is little popcorn buckets. When I used to play this when I was younger, I used to just draw out a bucket of popcorn on paper and then cut it out. That's how I made all my foods, so I'd also make like candy and drinks that way. But I'm gonna be making food that way later in this video, so to keep things a little different, I'm gonna make some striped buckets and then put real popcorn in them. This is all really extra for the video, but I'm just giving some ideas on what you could do. So I didn't have like striped scrapbook paper and I didn't want to just use marker in case that made the paper too soft. So instead I just cut very thin strips of red paper and then glue that on to just a piece of regular printer paper. I already made a pattern for the bag, so I'm going to follow that later. For some reason I just made it from scratch again this first time. But if you use the printable version, I'll link down below. You'll first want to make these little bottom cuts on your pattern, then cut out a rectangle this size, and then lift up each flap to draw the line of where you're going to have to cut it. Then once you've made those cuts, you can use that as a guide of where to fold, and then this is going to be the sides of the bag. And then you can fold up those bottom flaps, and you should be able to form it in a bag and the bottom should be closed. Before taping this together, I'm going to add one extra detail, and that is cutting the top edge of the bag in a zigzag shape. Unfortunately, the way I'm holding this, you can't really see anything, but I'm just cutting off little triangles. After that, I can fold all the panels together, so this is what the bottom looks like, and then I can add one piece of tape to the outside to close it up. And here is the finished bag. You can make this smaller if you want, but I wanted to make sure it would be able to hold more than like five pieces of popcorn. Okay, the next thing and really last thing I'm going to make for this is the tickets. So I'm going to go with kind of an old style carnival type ticket instead of one that's like black and white, which I think is what actual movie theater tickets look like, but I feel like everything's online, so who even knows. But to do this, I'm cutting out rectangles of orange paper and then cutting little curves into the corners. And then I'm writing admit one on them, which is basically what all the carnival tickets look like. And then I'm adding some more lines and details so it doesn't look as empty. And later I added little numbers on the sides. I was gonna number each one like one, two, three, four, but then got kind of bored because most of the numbers would be zeros anyway, so I just went with random numbers. Okay, after making the tickets, I think I have everything I need to start setting up. So an obvious place to do this would be just a room where you have a TV, but I decided to just bring in my computer into a random room so it would be more like to the eye level of the stuffed animals, and the movie they're gonna watch is from Netflix anyway. Okay, for the concession stand, I'm just gonna use a random box that I covered in a t-shirt, which I eventually changed to gold to add a little more pizzazz. And now I'm just gonna add some random candy I found around the house because I feel like a lot of people like candy as their movie theater snack. And while I was filming this, I came up with another idea to make this like a movie premiere so you could have your stuffed animals dress up all fancy, have red carpet for photos and stuff. So that's another idea if you want to go even bigger. And for the popcorn, I just put it in a big bowl next to the counter with a scoop to fill the bags. And of course, we need someone working at the counter, so I hired Tubby and put him in this little bow tie to be his uniform, I guess. But you'll see this is a pretty upscale movie theater just based on what the ticket collector is wearing. I put them in a full suit. I'll link the tutorial for the suit jacket and bow tie in the description box. For some reason, I just thought it fit with the movie theater. I'm having the door to the room open and have him standing in the doorway so there'd be like a line of people outside. And you might notice two new faces here. It's the two otters. I'd been looking for otters like these for months because I saw a girl in my class have the little keychain version for her backpack. And as a stuffed animal YouTuber, I thought I had to represent by having some sort of plushy keychain for my backpack. So I finally found them and they are so cute. Okay, now it's finally time for the stuffed animals to go in so they can just hand in their tickets. 
And Chelsea obviously just brought this huge purse to sneak snacks in, so she's skipping the concessions and going straight to the theater. But Sonny here has his eye on the largest candy on the table. And who could say no to such a cute little face? Nugget is finally going for the popcorn, and I actually made this like just in a pot with regular kernels because I didn't want it to be too buttery and yellow and stain the bags. So it wasn't the best popcorn I've ever had, but did I finish all of it at 9.30 at night so it wouldn't go to waste? Yes. Once I've got everyone into the theater with their snacks, we can get the movie started. I obviously didn't make a very packed theater, but I made sure all the little stuffed animals got a seat in the front. Okay, now they wouldn't be getting the full movie theater experience if they just started watching the movie. So I first made sure to show them all the classic ads and previews to make them wonder why they bother showing up on time. Of course, like me, Nugget has already finished half his popcorn before the movie even started. To get my computer to really feel like the big screen, you know I gotta turn the volume all the way up and the brightness to really capture that glow on their faces. Now I can dim the lights and I just had to show them the roller coaster preview before movies. I don't know why I love this so much because I'm kind of a scaredy cat when it comes to actual roller coasters, but watching them I think is really fun and obviously not scary. Okay, seven minutes into this video, I'll finally start the movie, and they are watching Ugly Dolls. I saw this was on Netflix, and I'd never seen it before, but my sister said it was good. And I feel like it's kind of fitting for stuffed animals, because, you know, the ugly dolls are like plush monster things, and, you know, they're trying to just get into the real world and be loved. So now you can just sit back, relax, and watch the movie with your stuffed animals. Okay, the second idea for something to play with your stuffed animals is a sandwich shop. So this is specifically like a subway shop where, you know, you can just put on all your toppings, pick your bread. And I'm going to be making this in a similar way to my ice cream shop. So all the pieces will be out of paper and then I can tape them together in whatever way the customer chooses. Okay, so I went out and bought some tan and very light tan pieces of paper for the bread. But when I used to do this with my sister when I was younger, we would usually just like color a piece of white paper tan to make the bread. But I wanted to look extra good for the video, so I just went out and bought the exact color I wanted. Here I have the little bread roll template. I'll link this in the description box. And there's this extra tab on the bottom bun to help the ingredients stick, but I wanted to test it out more, so I ended up doing all the bottom buns later off camera. But I'm basically just tracing them on pieces of paper and cutting them out. This is going to be the white bread and then the tan paper I'm going to have as whole wheat. Or if they wanted their sandwich toasted. One more detail I'm going to add since I've always been doing it is just taking a tan marker and making like little curved triangles in between like the bumps on the loaf. And this kind of represents the cut that made the loaves like puff up in this way. And then I'm going to do the same thing to make the whole wheat loaves. Next, I'm going to make some slices of turkey by cutting out random oval shapes out of this cream colored paper. And what's really going to make it look like turkey is outlining the edge with brown to make just regular turkey. But I remember also always doing pepper turkey because my dad ate it all the time. So I'm just taking like a black pen and dotting it around the edges. This was taking forever though, so I eventually switched to a bigger marker. But for the normal turkey, I'm just taking a brown marker and going just around the edge. Next, I'm going to cut out some vegan ham to be considerate of the pig stuffed animals I have. And I'm doing this the same way I did the turkey, just kind of random oval shapes, and then I'm outlining them with brown marker. Next, I'm going to make the cheeses, which are the easiest. I'm just taking white and yellow pieces of paper and cutting them into squares. The orange paper I had was just a little bit too orange, so I'm going to treat the yellow one as the cheddar. And the white is going to be Swiss, so I'm going to cut out little holes with a hole puncher. It would have been better if I had a even tinier hole punch, but this is just the normal size. And I probably should have used the cream paper for the Swiss because this cheese was looking a little bright. But with the cheeses done, the last toppings I'm going to make are some vegetables. So I'm just going to be doing tomatoes and lettuce. So to make the tomatoes, I have this big circle hole punch that I'm using to get perfect circles, but you could always just trace something and cut them out. Then I'm outlining the edge with red marker to be like the skin peeking out. And then I attempted to draw what I thought was the inside of a tomato based on memory. 
But after doing way too many of these, I realized this was not looking great. So I finally just Googled what the inside of a tomato looked like and kind of copied the inside and created this beautiful tomato right here. So to do this, you want to draw an arc that's about one third of the circle, then draw in two lines at an angle. And then to close up the bottom, I'm doing kind of an upside down U shape. Then I can color that in and do two more. I'll be honest, I feel like I was never able to top that first tomato I did. They just did not get any better from here, but it's okay. They still looked better than that first version. Next, to make the lettuce, instead of using green paper like I usually would, I'm painting each leaf individually. So I'm first mainly just trying to make like a little white branch in the middle and then covering everything around that green. And this does not have to be perfect. They'll still probably end up looking really good. Now you might be thinking, isn't shredded lettuce usually on like Subway sandwiches? And you'd be correct. I actually have made shredded lettuce on this channel before and it is slightly easier than this, but I thought it would be a lot harder to tape together with the rest of the ingredients. So I just went with full leaves. Once this is completely dry, I can start cutting out the lettuce shapes. So I'm really just kind of doing an oval with a flat base and kind of a tapered lower part. I don't know, we all know what a lettuce looks like. And I'm giving it a little wave too because each leaf is unique. And then I went and crumpled each leaf and then later just crumpled the entire page and then cut them out to save time. Okay, here it is done. I definitely made more lettuce than any other ingredients. So hopefully there are some bunny customers today. These are all the ingredients I'm making for today, but feel free to do as many toppings as you want. I'm gonna do a quick demo on how to put this together since it is a bit more advanced than the ice cream scoops. So on that top edge of the bottom bun, I'm gonna lay my ingredients down alternating, making sure a good portion of it still sticks out, but kind of covers where that bottom bun goes straight up. And then the hardest part is carefully flipping it over so you can put a piece of tape in the back and that'll seal in all the ingredients. That's a pretty good looking sub if you ask me. Next, I'm gonna do some optional things to really pull this all together. And that includes making a sign for the sandwich shop. I was coming up with names and wanted something that rhymed. So I decided to go with Tub Subs since I have a stuffed animal named Tubby. I hate to overwork him cause he was already working at the concession stand, but his name was the only one I could make work. So now he owns a sandwich shop. I also needed a catchphrase to go below the name and decided to go with a sub above. Playing off of Jersey Mike's is saying a sub above. What exactly a sub above means is really up for interpretation. Is it just the way my grandma pronounces a sub above? Is it just ripping off Jersey Mike's without getting sued? Or is it marketing genius like chum is fum? The world may never know. I may never know. And that's okay. While I had that philosophical digression, I finished the sign. Now the last thing I'm gonna make is a little uniform, which is gonna be really easy. It's just gonna be a visor made out of paper. So I already have my pieces cut out, one curved piece to be the brim, and I've lightly sketched out a line, maybe like a centimeter from the middle, and then it kind of gets thinner as it goes down the side. And then I'm making some cuts just up to that line and folding those tabs up. And this will make it really easy to attach to the band. I already cut out this long rectangle of paper that would fit around my stuffed animal's head. And then I can just add glue to the tabs and stick this on. And then for extra security, I added some tape on the back as well. Now I'm going to try it on, make sure it fits, and tape it together in the back. And then to be a little logo for the front, I cut out a T out of white paper. But I think I should have just written Tub Subs on the band, because for some reason he was kind of looking like a lifeguard to me. I also made a little name tag and stuck it on him with tape. Okay, now to set up the shop, I really just need a counter for the customers to order and where he'll make the sandwiches. So I'm just gonna be building this out of books. These are all my sisters and they're about the same size and thickness. So I'm gonna just do four total. So it's about the right size for Tubby. And then to make this a little more professional looking for the video, I took a rectangle of poster board and bent it so it would cover the books. And then one more thing I did was cut out little rectangles of tissue paper to wrap the sandwiches. I mainly just wrapped half the sandwich and it would have been better if my tissue paper was a little more white but I do think it helps it look a little more realistic. Now I can just arrange all the ingredients on the counter. And after hanging up the sign, this shop is ready to open. Oh, and one more thing I also did is scattered some random boxes around the room to be like tables in case any of the customers wanna sit down. 
I'm not gonna go through another assembly demo, but I'm gonna just point out some of the sandwiches I came up with. Here we have a turkey lettuce tomato. Oh, and here's how I wrapped them. I just wrapped the bottom half and then folded all the tissue paper into the back. And now it's nice and neat for the stuffed animals to hold. And it looks like this next one is peppered turkey with Swiss and cheddar on a wheat bun. But yeah, that's pretty much it on how to do this sandwich shop. Come on down to Tub Subs, where flavor takes a plunge and taste buds go wild. Our ingredients are sliced daily for maximum freshness, and our breads are baked every morning in-house. Our skilled sandwich artists craft every sub with care. Just listen to these real customers. Now this is a sub above! Ow! Mmm, mmm, mmm! Stop by one of our 200 national locations today. Tub Subs. A sub above. Okay, last but not least, arguably the easiest out of all of these, I'm going to be doing a fashion show. Back in the day, I used to plan these for weeks and design and sew every outfit, but since I have this channel and I've made so many clothes by now, I'm going to try to make this more high fashion and not necessarily just use the normal clothes I've made. So if you don't already have stuffed animal clothes, I would just use like your regular clothes and try to tie them in creative ways. This is a bad example because I did not think it looked very good and pulled it from the show. But for this next one, I ended up going to my scrap bin and found this tube top that I think was my sister's and she somehow like messed it up in some way. I don't know. But I'm going to style this as a dress for this stuffed animal. And since the back is really loose, I'm just kind of twisting it and adding a clip. And so it doesn't look that bad in the back. This is still a really basic look, so to add some pizzazz, I tried putting like a bow tie around her head, which I eventually took off. And then I had this really fuzzy yarn and only this exact amount, so I just doubled it over and tied it in a bow around her neck. And I thought that was enough to make it look a little more like a fashion show. If you already have like nice normal stuffed animal outfits, you could totally just use those. I just wanted to do something a little different since you've probably already seen some style videos from my channel. Okay, next I'm going to be taking these two pieces, a nice normal skirt and this big bow, and I'm going to put this bow right at the top of her head, and luckily she has this crown, which would go perfectly with the golden butterflies, but I feel like the bow is just so fashion for some reason. <laughs> and instead of wearing the skirt like normal, which, you know, that's just too basic, everyone's seen that, I'm going to have her wear it at, like, the top of her neck. And she's a llama, so this won't work for everyone, but I thought it looked pretty good. Sorry, just remembered she's an alpaca. Really embarrassed for making that mistake. For this next look, I'm going a little more elegant. So I think I just took a long sleeve shirt and put it around her front and then crossed the sleeves in the back so they go over her shoulders. I let the sleeves just hang there to be kind of like a built-in shawl. Then to add some glamor, I added this beautiful diamond necklace. Now the last piece I'm gonna show is gonna be the grand finale. I feel like a fashion show needs a showstopper. So I'm gonna be using this tutu I made from my unicorn dress video and just a regular skirt I made a long time ago. Actually, I think this was part of my summer collection, but this is gonna act as just a regular skirt. And then the tutu is gonna be the top, but I'm gonna only put one arm over, so it's kind of like diagonal, basically a one shoulder top. And that's basically it. I ended up tying her ears up in kind of a fancy way to be like a cool hairstyle and I think it's gonna make an impact. Okay, now the setup. For this, you really just need a runway. It doesn't even have to be boosted. It could just be an opening in the center of a crowd, but I'm gonna try to make this as nice as I can for the video. So for the background, I have this really pretty like sequin flower tool. I just had to buy it because it was on sale and I was gonna make a prom dress out of it, but prom just passed. So let me know if you still want a video on that during the summer but I kind of draped that in the background to be like the back of the stage. And the chapter books are back to give this runway a little bit of height. Not very much, but it's something. And then I know this is gonna look more red carpet than fashion show, but I did happen to have just a lot of red fleece that would be perfect to cover this. But I feel like that extra pop of color looks good. Now I can bring in the audience. 
And don't be alarmed if you see I bought another otter. I bought it for my friend. I don't have an otter buying addiction like my mom thinks. Now the show can finally start and hopefully I have enough editing skills to cover up my very awkward posing. Now that is it for Things to Do with Stuffed Animals Part 4. Thank you for being patient because I know a lot of you have been wanting to see this video. I know I haven't been posting very consistently, but next week is my last week of school, so after that I'll hopefully get back to doing one video a week. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time! Bye!